So the Philadelphia 76ers are 1-2 and two in preseason play. They take on the Atlanta Hawks tonight. What do we want to see? Have they given us enough, or is there more still to find out throughout this preseason? Well, you're going to wait to see our analysis coming up. You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. You are locked on with the Philadelphia 76ers. Kayla Santiago here, sideline reporter for the Delaware Blue Coast, the Sixers G League team. And of course, Keith Pompey, writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer, covering Sixers at all times. Thanks so much for making Sixers your first listen every day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. And you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. So we got a lot to discuss today before this preseason matchup against the Hawks. What do we want to see? There's still more to find out from this team before the regular season begins. Not only that, but Tyrese Maxey loves being in Philadelphia. We're going to take a look at his journey and what to expect from him in the regular season. And we've got to go on about the best duos in the NBA. There's a lot of talk that the Sixers are on top of that list in terms of guard play. And then, of course, the big fella and Tyrese Maxey. We'll get to all that coming up in this episode. But first and foremost, tonight, it's against the Atlanta Hawks right now. You know those Hawks. You've seen in past seasons what Trey Young has done to this team. And Keith, right now, looking at this matchup, you expect Tyrese Maxey and Paul George to be out there tonight. Even if they can't be, you're going to look at these other guards to see how they defend Trey Young out on the perimeter. Nick Nurse wants this team to be able to play really good defense. That's something they've been working on in training camp and now in preseason practice. So that's something that I'm going to be looking out for tonight in this preseason matchup. Yeah, exactly right. That Tonight, that is the one thing that you want to see. I mean, you, first of all, you want to see how the 76ers you know, offense improves. You want to see more improvement, more fluidity than they had when they played against the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, right? But the thing is, you want to see what they do against Trey Young, a smaller guard who's had a lot of success against the 76ers in the past. You know, now you have Caleb Martin. Now you have um, Paul George. You have a couple other guys coming off the bench. But you want to see how they handle him. Like, you want to, you want to see that. You want to see if they can – you know, deny him the ball if they can um, uh, prevent him from getting into his spots. Because to me, you know, the other guys they have on the team are are, are pretty good. We know Clint Capella can run the rim. Um, You know what Jalen Johnson can do. But the thing is, it's all about preventing Trey Young to get his spots and get into his spots and harassing him. And and I think tonight it's just going to be a little – preview or a sneak peek or or so to speak to so to speak to see what the Sixers can do and the Sixers have always struggled on the perimeter defensively throughout seasons especially in the playoffs you look at a guard like Trey Young I'm not saying that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are just like Trey Young but this is the guards that you're going to be looking at in the east come playoff time though fast the quick guards that can really shoot from anywhere in that preseason game that the Hawks had they come out on top 131 to 130 against the Pacers Trey Young 17 points six assists in just 21 minutes so it's not even just about the scoring Keith Trey Young can dish the ball all over the place and I'm looking forward to see what Tyrese Max can do Paul George what those assignments are going to be even if Jared McCain comes in because we talked about his struggles defensively especially on that perimeter now you have another smaller guard in Trey Young clearly Young though has been in the NBA he knows what he's doing but this is a big test defensively, and if you're Nick Nurse, when you've been preaching defense, defense, defense all the time, this is a game, and I know it's the preseason, but you can really figure out, okay, what works, what doesn't, because this is the caliber type of play that you're going to see in the East with such quick and great guards like Trey Young. Oh, you're 100% right. I mean, I really like this matchup for the 76ers, and 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 what I mean by that is I'm not saying sometimes people say, oh, I like this matchup because – they're going to win. Or I like this matchup because of other things. I like the Minnesota matchup because you got to go up against Ant-Man. You got to go up against those solid defenders. I like this matchup because you're going up against a, a small, speedy guard, a guard who's had a lot of success against you. And this is going to be a test for the guys, like we said, to see what they can do. Now, the one thing is, yes, 
I would love to see what Jared McCain can do against him. But at the same time, I'm not, I don't want Jared to guard him for, That's you know, true. unless it's switched. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, so this is a great matchup um, to do that. And, and here's the thing, you know, Trey Young has been to this team for a while. Um, he's a guy who, with his former teammates, uh, you always heard that they didn't see eye to eye. Well, those guys are no longer there. It's always been his team. But the fact that they keep trading people out lets you know that there is no no one can say that this is at least 10% their team if they're going to be the man. You know that Trey is the guy. And last year, people said the ball moved a whole lot better when he had it in his hands. So, you know, we'll we'll really get to see. And I'm and I'm excited. I'm actually excited to see the night's game, to see what Maxie and Paul George and, and, and Caleb Martin can do. Yeah, we might get a few of the ice trays out there. We know Trey Young loves to do that, especially when he's playing Philadelphia, like serving in everybody's face. But, you know, this is a matchup you look year after year. Okay, well, Trey Young is a killer out there. Yes, he's tough to defend on any team, but when you're a head coach like Nick Nurse and consistently you've been telling the media, well, defense is our priority. Defense is our priority. We even said Paul George saying in training camp. Now, clearly, Paul George showed what he could do offensively in that game against the Timberwolves. But Paul George still saying, I'm trying to get the chemistry with this defense. That's the main thing that we're focusing on. This is an opportunity to do that. And yes, at the end of the day, you have to score more points. And you see in that preseason game that the Hawks put up 131. They're a high scoring offense when Trey Young is out on the floor. I get that. But when you're competing against teams in the East, this is a true test. And I know it's only the preseason, but you figure out where your conditioning is at, especially defensively when you're chasing Trey Young all over the perimeter. Where do you need to work on things? If that's Tyrese Maxey's assignment here tonight, which it looks like it might be, or a switch with Paul George, it's going to be interesting to see. And the one thing I love is Tyrese and Trey Young are a little bit similar. Trey, I think, is a better three-point shooter. But when you look at it, they're both going out there. They're running all over the floor. And Trey Young is not going to be afraid just because it's a preseason game going to back off. He's just not going to do that. He's going to go all out there. He's going to give it everything they got. And it's just going to be interesting to see. I think for Nick Nurse, too, this is an opportunity to really work on that defense. Because, Keith, we've heard it before, but defense is huge on this team. And when you just had a guard like James Harden in the past as your second or third go-to scorer that doesn't play any defense – Paul George has stepped up for that. And I think this is really the first time we're going to be able to see that in this preseason. It is. It is. And, and something else that I'm looking forward to seeing is, is Dyson Daniels. You mm-hmm. know, how the 76ers are going to be able to contend with that. Because what Atlanta is trying to do this season is, you know, you have Trey, you have Dyson's coming in, and he's going to play off with Trey Young. So what happens is who is going to be the guy Who's going to be the secondary defender, so to speak, or the guy that when the ball swings, you know, he's going to get it. You know, it's going to be him and, and Jalen Johnson. But who who's going to find um, Daniels? Right. Because all the work, all the stuff coming out of Atlanta is how much Dyson loves playing off of this guy. They think he's going to get a lot of easy shots. He's going to do a, a lot of great things. And they think that he may have a, a really good year. Right a really good year because of that. So to me, yes, we got that the 76ers are going to have to shut down Trey, but they're also going to be able to take out the second option because you know what? Trey is going to be one of those things where either Trey is going to try to get Dyson involved early, and then he's going to take over, or Trey is going to try to drive the lane, hit some threes, do some other things, and then distribute the ball to him. So That's, again, why I believe that this is going to be a great matchup for the 76ers. And looking at it, too, there's just so many good duos in the East right now. We talked about the top of the Celtics, Brown and Tatum, of course. You have a guard like Donovan Mitchell with the Cavs as well. Also, so many just people. You got Dame out there who who knows how many preseason or regular season games that he's going to play. But at the end of the day, this is a good test for what you're going to see throughout the season in the conference. And, there's a lot of rumors right now and stories coming out that Embiid is not going to play any back-to-backs. Either is Paul George. So this is a test for Tyrese Maxey, too, defensively to see how he can do because there might be some nights where it is just him. How is Kayla Martin going to pick up? Kelly Oubre as well. So I'm excited, too, Keith. We're looking forward to it as Trey Young going to try to be the ice tray on the Sixers, but the Sixers, they do not want that tonight. Speaking of Tyrese Maxey, 
it has been so much fun to watch him develop throughout the Sixers team and how much he really loves it here. We're going to talk about that coming up. And then also some of the best duos in the NBA right now, especially the East, one that the Philadelphia 76ers are going to be looking to compete against. And hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return to FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, that's at FanDuel.com. Make sure you visit FanDuel.com today. And, of course, we've been talking about it, the WNBA Finals. They are here. The series right now is tied at one apiece. And if you're getting into the WNBA or you like these two teams, the Minnesota Lynx and the New York Liberty, make sure you go after this spread right now. The New York Liberty coming out on top in that last game. The Lynx coming out on top in that first game. FanDuel predicts that the Liberty will come out on top. Their favorites minus three in that contest. It's going to be a fun one on Wednesday night. You won't want to miss it, so be sure to place your bet here today. The Minnesota Lynx have to feast the Collier Defensive Player of the Year, and then, of course, New York Liberty with Sabrina Unescu and so many other big pieces. And, of course, we have more action. The Buffalo Bills are minus one-and-a-half favorites in football against the New York Jets, so make sure you head over to FanDuel right now, America's number one sportsbook. All right, so Tyrese Maxey, you can't say enough good things about this player, who he's becoming, and who he will become for this future of this team. Now, we've discussed it before, Keith. Right now, yes, this is Joel Embiid's team. Does he have eight more years left to play like he says? I don't think so. But Joel probably has about maybe two or three years left in his prime. I'm not saying he won't be playing basketball in that amount of time, but his prime isn't that much longer. So when that turns over... You have a guy like Tyrese Maxey that is going to be able to take over. He won most improved player last year, of course. And Keith, for him, it's really something awesome to see because there's been so many draft picks for Philly just haven't turned out. You look at Markel Fultz, Ben Simmons, you know, Tyrese Maxey going as 21st overall in his draft class in 2020. He's just so happy to be here. He's such a hard worker. And this is exactly what you want. For somebody like Maxi, his dreams are coming true, and he shows it every single day that he's just lucky to be out there in a Sixers uniform. Yeah, you know what? He he, he is. I mean, he he says that. I mean, like, you know, I, I spoke to him this weekend, and he said, look, man, I'm blessed. Like, I thank God every day. He thanks God every day that he's here. I mean, he talks about how, you know, as, you know, coming up during the draft, it's one of those things where, you know, you want to you be a lottery pick. You want to be that guy. But the more that he looks at it, it's like he was able to play with Hall of Famers. He he got uh, people to be mentors to him. He learned so much to whereas now you look at it, you know, he's an all star. He's the um, he's the reigning most improved player. Um, he's learned so much because of the guys that he's played with. And it starts with, you know, of course, MB. Then you had Ben Simmons. You had James Harden. You had Tobias Harris. Now you got Paul George. But then there's other guys like Andre Drummond. Um, you know, there's a, the list goes on and on. And even now, a lot of veterans. So for Tyrese, an extremely smart guy, a guy who who wants to learn and he wants to pick your brain. And that's exactly what he's doing. He has all these guys to learn from. So, you know what? It's a, it was a blessing for him. But you got to also admit it's a blessing for the 76ers because of the type of guy that he is his work ethic, his, 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 his desire to be great. You know, those are certain things that, you know, unfortunately nowadays everyone doesn't have that. They, mm -hmm. Some guys are just blessed to play in the NBA and want to get a paycheck. Maxi, if, you know, if they were playing for like $20 going to the winners, Tyrese Maxi is still going to be out there playing. That's how much he loves the game. So, yes, he's blessed and the Sixers are blessed to have him. 
And I think the biggest thing you look at, too, is just who has Joel Embiid played with as a second star that has actually got along. You know, him and Ben Simmons said they were brothers, and then the season after, Ben Simmons goes out on an interview and says, well, Joel and I don't even talk after the season at all. We just go do our own things. We don't converse. We don't do anything like that. Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid genuinely get along. You saw in that very first preseason game against the Breakers that Joel was kind of coaching Maxey up a little bit, pointing on the floor, telling him where to go. And some guards might come in and say, well, what do you know? Why are you telling me what to do? Tyrese Maxey loves it. And I think the biggest thing about Tyrese that I love so much is he takes everything in from all of these star players. Did James Harden work out? No, absolutely not. But he took so much from James and it helped Tyrese rise up a level. Maxie is going to take a lot from Paul George as well. And then, of course, he's obviously listening to Joel Embiid, who's an MVP already. So you look at it and you say, OK, I want to look at that draft class, too, because in 2020, Tyrese goes 21st. You say, OK, how is he going to be? Now, granted, Anthony Edwards was the first pick in that draft, and Tyrese Halliburton does go at 12th overall in 2020. But you look at this draft class, Keith, and I have to say on record that Tyrese Maxey is definitely the steal of that draft so far. Clearly, Anthony Edwards is great, but he also went number one. That's what you expected. Did you expect this out of Tyrese Maxey? Because I for sure didn't. And now I look back at it and say, well, the Sixers knew what they were doing. He's definitely a steal of the 2020 draft class. Nah, I didn't. I mean, think about it. Tyrese Maxey was even the best player on that Kentucky team when he came mm -hmm. out. Right. So, no, I, I wasn't expecting it. Um, and, and, I'll, and, and I'll say this, like, you know, when Tyrese first came out and he was a rookie, I mean, I remember the first time because people that was the COVID year yeah. or it was, you know, the, the, the COVID season, not the year where the season was broke down. I mean, shut down in 2019-20, but it's 2020-21 where <coughs> or actually 2021. It was where um, when Maxi, like I remember the first time I saw him in person, it was like basically because everything was over Zoom. So I'm walking down the street in Indianapolis. And I see him and he's I'm walking like we're walking towards each other. And I like, wow, this guy's a little bit bigger than I thought. Like, I like, wow, he looks like, you know, he, you know, he has some strength to him. And then like, but then you start hearing all these stories about how he always worked out. He did this. He did that. And he always kept saying, you know, I have to get one percent better each day. And I remember there was times where Doc Rivers used to have to like try to keep him out of the gym from that because he was always in there. And, you know, I got to a point where, you know, I, you know, you look at it and you say to the kids, I say to my daughter, like, look, Tyrese Maxey is out there every day. The last person I know that did stuff like that every day, multiple times a day was Kobe Bryant. So when you, when you see that, see how he has progressed each year, he's gotten better at something else. You're not surprised. You know what I mean? But initially you're looking at it and you're saying, how good is he going to be? You know what I mean? So I'm not surprised once I realized that his, what his work ethic was like. But beforehand, when he was drafted, no, I didn't think he was going to be this good. And, and I mean, think about it. He was a combo guard who struggled to knock down threes as a rookie. And now all of a sudden, He's a point guard who can shoot threes. So, and you know, this guy is, he he's come a long way in these four years and he's only going to get better. And it makes you scratch your head when you think about other draft picks from the Sixers, like a Markel Fultz and a Ben Simmons, because maybe if they just put a little bit more work and if Ben Simmons worked on a shot just a little bit, he could have been better. Tyrese Maxey is living proof of, you know, you come in maybe under the radar a little bit. You're not projected to be the second star player, but you're in the gym early, late, every single day, working on your craft and then coming out here, taking a ton of constructive criticism from these vets and all of a sudden you're this second go-to star and which while well, Levine not playing any backs-to-backs this season is what it's going to look like. Tyrese Maxey is going to be that guy throughout this season, especially during the regular year. So it's been just great to see his development. Not only that, you can tell his character is just awesome. He's always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always having a good time and he truly wants to be in Philadelphia. And I think somebody for like Joel Embiid, this is exactly who he wanted. Joel clearly wants to stay in Philadelphia. He's raising his family here too. And all he wanted was that second star to kind of have that same mentality. Tyrese has it. And 
you know, you look at duos in the NBA and you just hope, you just hope that this one will pay off the chemistry, the leadership, and of course the athleticism between both of these guys. Well, in just a moment here, we are going to talk about some of those duos in the NBA in terms of guards or just overall, especially in the East, because it's going to be a fun year with a whole lot of talent. All right, so we get to the fun part of the show here where we kind of have a little bit of prediction and banter in terms of overall duos right now in the NBA. So clearly you look at it and you say, okay, Tyrese and Joel are at that top of that list at this moment. Maybe not in terms of experience and where they've gotten, but just skill and athleticism. But you look at other guards and you say, okay, well, Kyrie Irving and Luka – Maybe Luca can be pushed as a forward, but a lot of the times he's playing as a guard too. Maxi and Paul George, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. There's so many. And then you look at the duos in terms of just other teams, Nicola and Jamal Murray, KD and Devin Booker, Giannis and Dame, and then Tyrese and Joel. So Keith, on this list of fantastic duos in the NBA, where do you have Tyrese and Joel right now? Do you think it's still to be determined because they haven't gotten so far in their playoff runs, or do you think they can be at the top of that list based on athleticism and how much they play together? You know, I think they could probably be a, a top five duo. Um, you know, and 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 the reason why I'm saying that is because you know we talk about it, but what about the availability? Now, last year yeah. we when 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 everything was healthy. Now again, Joel did score a lot of points. People forget they were the top scoring duo duo in the NBA, the top one. So. You know, to me personally, right now, and 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 I guess until someone like dethrones them, the best duo in the NBA, you have to go with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, uh, you know, Luca and and um, what's my man's name? Uh, Kyrie. Yeah, Kyrie. Kyrie. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're they're up there. And then the one that we didn't talk about is is Kevin um, Durant. And, and mm -hmm. Devin Booker, right? Now, they struggled mightily this past season, but they are good. The, the thing that I really like about the uh, the Sixers duo is that a, a lot of these guys that we're talking about, they're similar. The thing mm -hmm. about the Sixers duo is that you have inside and you have outside, right? So it's kind of like you have a guard, you have a center tandem, which could really help out. And then you have to add right now, because of that, you have to add Carl Anthony Towns and Jalen Brunson, yeah. too, right? But I do think that, you know, the Sixers one is, is top five at the low point, but I think it can go up. I really do. But when you talk about trios, when I know we're not talking about that, but then you look at it and you have to say they have one of the best trios. But right now, for those two being a duo, yeah, they are, they, they are good. They are good, but it just is all predicated on health, right? And is and, and availability. And what I mean by that is if he's missing 15 games, 15 back to like they have 15 back to backs. So if he right. misses 15 games, the Sixers are going to look extremely different in those 15 games that he's not there. Yeah, you're not really even going to be able to see this duo too much throughout the season. I think the good thing about it is they've already played together previously. My worry, of course, and we've been talking about this really all week and all preseason long, is how Paul George will fit into that if they're all not playing together. But, you know, the point of bringing up, obviously, it's inside, outside, but also Tyrese and Joel really play so differently. Tyrese loves to run off the floor. He's a running gun type guard. He loves to push the pace. And when Joel's in, sometimes it does slow down a little bit. They wait for him to get back on the block. Tyrese will still run if they want to. But some way, somehow, they make it work, and it just has been so fun to watch. I'm honestly excited to see this year Jalen Brunson and Carl Anthony Towns as much as I don't want that to be a good matchup for the Sixers and the Knicks and hopefully the 76ers that they play them in the postseason come out on top. But I think, Keith, that's going to be another matchup that you look out for, not only just with the big and the guard, but also I don't think Cat is going to play as much as people think either. He's also dealt with injuries throughout his career. They're going to want to make sure he's healthy. In my opinion, too, they get Carl Anthony Towns not only to try to come out of the East, but also that is a perfect matchup with the Sixers and the Knicks if you're going throughout the playoffs. Brandon, Joel is a better player. But at the same time, you look at it, we might not even see the duo that much of Brunson and Cat throughout the season, especially with it being newer. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, Cat is not exactly a a, a lockdown defender or you know exactly. or a rim protector. So yeah. you know, he could get exposed at times, like you know, going out there trying to guard certain players, especially the Sixers. But um, you know, I I think you know that the person who's going to have to run that ship is going to have to be Brunson and Cat's going to have to play off of him like a secondary role. But whereas Embiid, we all know Embiid's going to draw the double teams and that's going to free Maxi up to do what he wants to do. So, you know, it, it, that's a pretty one. Again, before Embiid was injured, they were the top scoring duo in the NBA above everyone else. So let us know in the comments who you think is the best NBA duo going into the season, whether that's the guard duo or the big and the guard, the in and outside type players too, because it's going to be fun to see how these guys are able to manage it. And honestly, we might not even see this duo that much throughout the regular season, because guess what? If Paul George and Joel B don't play on back-to-backs, Tyrese Maxey is going to need some time to rest so he doesn't get burned out. He doesn't get injured. So maybe we don't even see Tyrese in those back-to-backs that Joel Embiid and Paul George, some of them don't play. It's a wait-and-see game here. But nevertheless, a very exciting matchup. Yes, 76ers here tonight at 7.30 p.m. Make sure you all tune in. And thank you all again for making Locked on Sixers your first listen today. Now for your second listen, go find Locked on NBA with local experts. Keep you updated daily on the biggest storylines ahead of the season. Find Locked On NBA on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast. And go listen to Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Become a fantasy basketball expert and get the edge over your league mates with daily tips from Josh Lloyd. Find Locked On Fantasy Basketball on YouTube or wherever you listen. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked On 76ers.